something that's been pretty consistent from the beginning of the year till now has been the uh, the evolution. Maybe that'd be the pro- the proper word for artificial intelligence. The way it has moved into our consciousness, into our vernacular, people downloading AI apps, people discussing AI, people being afraid of AI, just really a lot of confusion, a lot of misinformation, disinformation, falsehoods. I, I'm going to try to help clear that up by bringing on our guest. And I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to give you the cliff notes for her resume because it's pretty darn impressive. Uh, she's the CEO and founder of Sales Choice. That's an AI software uh, services company. She's a contributor for Forbes magazine. She's written more than a dozen books. She's an ice sculptor. She's a cobbler. She could probably make hats. I'm sure she could do anything. It's Dr. Cindy Gordon. Doctor, good morning. Welcome aboard. Good morning, and I also make a great trifle. <laughs> I, uh, Doc, before we get going, let me ask you this question. Do you have a New Year's resolution? Uh, yes, actually, I do. It's to uh, finish the book that we started on AI ethics uh, is one of the resolutions. Yes. Okay, well, I like where you're going with that, AI ethics. Because when it comes to artificial intelligence, one of the things that people first mention is that AI is going to take over the world. We're going to have this post-apocalyptic dystopian society that looks like something out of the Terminator, that artificial intelligence is going to take over the world. First of all, tell me that I need to pump the brakes and calm down. We don't need to worry about that. And second of all, paint me a picture, let's arbitrarily say five years from now, in which artificial intelligence is more prominent in our world. Sure. Well, I think the first uh, point is AI is not going to go away, and it is one of the more disruptive technological innovations in our lifetime. I think you know, before I talk about the future, just put in perspective how much our world has changed with the advent of the cell phone, right, and how ubiquitous you know mobile technology is. So if you look ahead five years, you're going to basically see AI underpinning all pretty well large-scale business processes in uh, mid- to large companies. It's not to say that it can't be used in small businesses, um, but the key thing is you need a lot of data, right, in order to be able to build an AI model. Um, there's going to be good actors and there's going to be bad actors. I mean, we've already just seen the uh, the New York Times suing uh, Microsoft and uh, OpenAI for taking their news content. I mean, it just uh, happened, I think, uh, two days ago, right, where they put out their legal suit. So the outcomes there are going to be quite interesting in terms of the copyright infringement. Um, in terms of looking ahead, I think you can see more uh, innovation coming in with social robots. I think that's one factor that hasn't really permeated significantly uh, in North American markets, but if you travel a great deal to Asia, you will definitely see uh, little uh, robots that are, you know, serving food, uh, that are in the uh, shopping malls, uh, in the banking system, replacing tellers. So we are moving into a more ubiquitous, um, I call it cobot enablement uh, side. I think the things we need to worry about um, is really more the geopolitical differences between um, you know, how North American democracies and Asian countries view AI. Uh, there's far more social ranking in Asian countries, particularly China, uh, which is a very much a surveillance worry. Um, you know, we're not going to have that uh, aspect within the North American uh, countries um, until uh, there's a shift in uh, political views, right? And, and that's well beyond five years. But I do think there is uh, some other dynamics that, you know, we need to be very alert to uh, in terms of democracy. You know, you, you use the word disruptor, and, and I think that's a perfect way to describe this, because when I when you say disrupting, the first thing that comes to my mind is is the economy, is jobs. And I've, I've seen some numbers, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, that artificial intelligence – could take over upwards of 300 million jobs over the next decade. Is that a, is that a proper estimate? And, and what do we do to counter that if it's true? Uh, there's no question there's going to be uh, a loss of jobs, mainly in highly routineized jobs. Uh, you know, we've already seen the aspect of robots coming into manufacturing infrastructures, right? So, I mean, AI is really, really good at uh, solving repetitive aspects of questions uh, and solving problems that, you know, are pretty regular, re- structured in the sense of not having a lot of variance or too much variance that they can't interpret, right? So the the estimates are definitely going to be, I mean, 
I think, quite devastating into some definitely clerical roles, administrative roles. Um, also, I think we need more guardrails and laws around journalism, right, um, because uh, these cobots can be very effective in writing stories, right? Um, you know, it's going to impact a lot of professional roles that we've never seen before in terms of lawyers, uh, mainly the junior lawyers, right, the, the, where they don't have the operational experience, uh, the ones that might have been doing the research. So researchers, um, you know, will come under uh, greater scrutiny. I don't know if those numbers that you talk about are accurate. Um, I mean, I think some of the main concerns are what's the implication on our most creative artistic industries, right? You probably saw the petitions in California uh, on the art, uh, on the guilds, right, and the, uh, the artistic guilds being very concerned of AI and implications of writing better scripts. <laughs> you shouldn't say better scripts, but writing scripts, um, especially if they learn from, you know, some of the best works, right? Um, yeah, so it's, we're moving into a period that I, I think until our laws come into effect, and that's, I think, where the greatest hope is. Uh, the AI laws will come into force in North America by 2025. I wouldn't say next year. I think the drafts are there, but there's a lot of social, uh, you know, uh, verification and alignment that needs to happen and also to think through how do they actually exercise uh, the laws. You know, the, the greatest, I think, Benefits are going to be where things have been, people have been marginalized, right, um, with data sets that are highly biased. So in high-impact applications, they will require third-party audits, right? So the, the industry is going to become more regulated, and, and it's really, really needed. It really, really is, Scott. You know, I, I see the benefits of this from a production standpoint. Uh, a, a product created quicker, a uh, product created without having to jump through as many hoops, but the the shift in manpower, I, I just find this so troubling, Cindy, I, that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to have to find different ways to make a living. Uh, industries are going to have to completely pivot with regards to manpower. I mean, I, I don't see as many positives to this as there are negatives. I, again, the production side of it, I think, will be benefited, but I don't see how we benefit in other areas. It, I guess the bottom line is, and Cindy, this baffles me, is AI a good thing, or is it just something that at this point we have to accept and figure out how to make it work for us as best as possible? Well, I think uh, as um, Dr. Stephen Hawking, the great physicist, said before he passed away, um, AI could be our greatest invention of mankind, or it could, you know, impact our species. I mean, it was a very uh, provocative comment. Um, I think the way, the way I look at things is we will figure it out. I mean, you have to kind of parachute yourself back, let's say, to the wild, wild west, right? So imagine we're both gunslingers and we're leaving a little saloon town and we hear about this railway coming in, right, that's going to um, really impact the sound, the environment, right? And, and we've gone through so many evolutions, right, in terms of, uh, you know, major, major advancements. We saw the same thing with airplanes, right? You know, and we had to go through a whole process to be able to regulate that industry, right? Um, and so the same thing's going to happen with AI, right? Uh, we will come together, I do believe, globally eventually on the guardrails. I mean, I think the top ethicists are very concerned. Um, will we move fast enough, I think, is the real question, right? I mean, uh, the fact that it's taking us so long to put in the guardrails, is, is that's way too slow for... Uh, so we've got the Wild West right now, but it's going to be roped in. Uh, I'm very confident of that. And I do think that, you know, AI can bring so many benefits. I mean, we, we probably will solve cancer in, in our lifetime, and I think in my lifetime, because of AI. Uh, we will be able to see things that we normally couldn't see, right, and give us better predictions on the risks. And I think also as the, the laws come in, we'll see more equity um, in the loan provisioning, right? Because they'll come under greater scrutiny on their algorithms that are determining whether, um, you know, a person should receive a loan or not. And I think there's been a lot of marginalization in the uh, in the financial services system with algorithms trained on data sets that are very historical. In other words, the data is only as good as the representative pathway that you want to achieve, Right. So I think, you know, I think there's going to be some big wins. I think there's going to be some incredible um, issues in um, drone technology. And I think that's, that's I have to say, one area I'm very concerned about. We've seen also the impact of guns and, uh, you know, right throughout 
all of our countries, right? Just uh, even recently, some of the incidents that happened over in Europe, right, at, at universities. But some of these miniature drones, um, you know, can move in very, very rapidly, and, and they can be as small as, you know, a small little, uh, you know, a smaller than your hand, your hand, right? So that micro technology, I think, is something to worry about. And those will all be controlled by AI agents, right? Uh, incredible precision. Um, but incredibly dangerous. So we're going to see good actors, we're going to see bad actors, but that's nothing different than we've seen as a society. Um, I think the bigger issues here are very much around climatic change, right, that we need to be very, very concerned about. So I think you kind of have to put AI in perspective of some of the other bigger issues that we have, and also trying to get into a much more peaceful uh, world, right? Uh, It's been uh, quite the year for uh, so many countries. Uh, I feel a little better when you put it into perspective like that. She's a uh, award-winning entrepreneur. She's written more than a dozen books. She's a contributor for Forbes. Dr. Cindy Gordon, it has been a pleasure. I hope you're staying warm up there in Canada. <laughs> yes, I have my polar fleet. <laughs> All righty. Appreciate your time, Dr. Gordon. Thank you. Have a great day. Scott. All righty. Happy holidays and best of the new year. All righty. Thank you. You too. It's Dr. Cindy Gordon, entrepreneur, author, Bon vivant, a little bit of everything, giving us the lay of the land in the world of artificial intelligence.